that how Krishna is the source of everything. He's a supreme cause, a supreme proprietor, enjoyer, master. And then the next verse talks about a person must engage in the process of bhakti, which is Abhideya. And then Krishna will uh, destroy the darkness with the lamp of knowledge with the, and give the right intelligence by which the person, a jiva, a devotee can come to him. And then Arjuna says, yes, oh my Lord, that's, you are the, you are great. You are the topmost Param Brahma. You are the absolute truth. And not only I, it's the supreme, all the great sages, all the great scriptures, all the great rishis have also said the same thing. So the 12 to 18 verses were spoken by, by Arjuna. But now, Arjuna expressed in the late, last few verses, that is text 16, we discussed. Please tell me in more detail. Vistarena. I want to know about you in more detail. And we discussed that a devotee has greed. A devotee is not, not satiated. Because a devotee wants to know about the Supreme Lord more and more. More and more. Because this is the real joy and the nectar for the heart. And the, the, the Arjuna expressed his desire in the form of a question. And from text 19, we will read today. And then uh, Krishna responds to those questions. So let's begin with the reading today. And like always, if anyone wants to read, you can raise your hands. See if you can get a chance to read uh, the verses or the translations. Yes, Avani, please start. Krishna, Sri Bhagavan Uvacha, Antase Tata, Yashyami, Devya, He Atma, Vibhutsaya, Pradhanyata, Kuru, Shrestha, Nasti, Anto, Vishtarasya, Me. Translation The Supreme Personality of God had said, Yes, I will tell you of my splendorous manifestations, but only of those which are prominent, O Arjuna, for my opulence is limitless. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you so much for this wonderful words. Now the Supreme Lord is speaking here. Sri Bhagavan Uvacha, that is Lord Krishna, is, is speaking this because he's responding to Arjuna's question. What was Arjuna's question? I want to know about your opulence. And that's the title of this chapter, The Opulence of, of the Absolute. Now, look at this statement. Is it, okay, I will tell you of my splendorous manifestations, but only of those which are prominent. Okay. Oh, Arjuna, for my opulences are limitless. Hmm. Does it sound like a very boastful statement? <laughs> right? Or, you know, self-aggrandizement. For example, if a big, you know, like let's say an experienced doctor comes, hey, I have a lot of qualifications, but I'll just tell you top five of those. <laughs> right? It may sound very boastful, but it may be the fact also. And in this case, it's certainly the fact because Krishna is, is not, a, is not a, a boastful person. One of the main opulences of the Supreme Lord that he is, is, is humble. He is uh, he's humble. And uh, what's that famous verse? Eshvaryasya samagrasya vidyasya yashasya shriya Jnana Vairagya Shreva Shannam Bhaga Iti Gana Jnana Vairagya. He, is, he has limitless wealth, limitless opulence, limitless beauty, qualities and everything. Yet he became the driver or charioteer of Arjuna. So he is not a boastful person. And there are so many other pastimes where he became the servant of his devotee. Many, many pastimes. So he's not a boastful person. Now, if a person, let's say a patient comes to a doctor 
and the patient has a real bad disease which needs urgent treatment and urgent surgery needs to perform but patient is having second thoughts that maybe this doctor is a cheater maybe this doctor is is trying to just you know get up some money out of me and and so the doctor may say my you know dear patient you have a serious problem right so this this surgery needs to be performed right now and trust me i have performed 500 of these surgeries and i know your problem so let me handle your case for your good right when the doctor may say i am expert in this matter i have performed 500 of those surgeries in the past i've done like 20 30 years of experience in this matter you may go anywhere but you will not find a a person uh better in this field because other doctors are also have been trained by me now is this a uh, uh is it boastful what do you say is it boastful hmm. it's for the good of the patient isn't it right rather than wasting his time let's say if it goes one week two weeks here and there who's the right doctor his disease will worsen and even yesterday only we were reading in the bhagavatam that the diseases that fire should not be uh, left uncured even when they are in small stage one should take action the point here is that krishna is going to talk about his opulences for our own good so that we can try to see the hand of god in every aspect of life how a self realized person sees the world right how he is the cause how how the person behind the scene is the supreme lord who is the main uh, controller and this is the, the title of this chapter called vibhuti yoga right vibhuti the word here is vibhuti bhuta here means creations or manifestations vibhuti v means vishesh or special so everything is is a manifestation of god or krishna but he's going to talk about some special manifestations which are certainly his manifestations with which we can connect to god vibhuti yoga like we can connect with god through to or krishna through through work that's karma yoga through through meditation dhyana yoga through through knowledge gyana yoga and through love and devotion that's um, bhakti yoga similarly when we connect god through the indirect manifestations that's vibhuti yoga or linking process yoga also means to link like you had the zoom link to to connect isn't that the link helps us to connect so the like minded people all of you such sincere devotees we are there to connect with each other and to read about uh, krishna to in bhagavad gita so we will see more in this chapter and and we'll go a little fast because there are a lot of aspects in here so we'll go a little fast I want to add a few points so um, it's like when we go to a company and ask uh who is the ceo of this company the ceo has to come come forward and say yes i am the ceo of this company so it's something like that that krishna is trying to tell that he is a supreme lord and uh, because krishna only has to tell his his opulences because no one else can tell only he knows himself best because we are the created we cannot understand the creator in fullness because we are the created we we, we are limited and god is unlimited and the creator is superior than the created so krishna only has to speak of his opulences no one else can speak and krishna is also telling in this particular verse that my my opulence uh, opulences are limitless but i'm going to just tell the prominent ones because it's a war setting he cannot go on talking he has to finish quickly because arjun has to go in the battle field very shortly so okay so we will see now what are those different vibhutis next one yes karina atashi please hari krishna dhanam pranam mokesh rupa parav you are citing text 
अहम आत्मा गुदा केशा सर्वभूता सया सीता सीता अहम अदृश्य माध्यम च भूतानम अंत एव च हरे कृष्ण translation to unmute i am the super i am the super soul or arjuna seated in the hearts of all living entities i am the beginning the middle and end of all beings hari krishna thank you so there is not of aham 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 coming here aham i am the atma i am the adi i am the middle i am the end i am this i am that lot of this will come but again as we discussed this is not about being boastful when a material person says oh i am great oh i am this oh i am you know you know i i have this i have that that's very very boastful because ahankara vimudatma karta hamiti manyate but when supreme lord says it is not it is for our own good because if he does not say then who will say right because if we discuss in the last time also right that all the demigods like indra chandra varuna rudra marutra etc they are praising the lord by great verses by chanting countless verses lord shiva is glorifying about the supreme lord krishna lord brahma is glorifying about the supreme lord 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 shiva says krishna is god lord brahma says krishna is god indra says krishna is god surya says krishna is god varuna says krishna is god and in krishna says and let's ask directly <laughs> from krishna who is god krishna says yes i am the god <laughs> i am the supreme lord i am the bhakta ram yagya tapasam sarva loka maheshwaram so i am that supreme person krishna is saying so that one should have no doubt and this is not some some impersonalist can call oh this is the unborn impersonalist form of god within this krishna speaking this no it's directly says shri bhagavan uvacha lord krishna said these verses so he is the atma of everything and there are three ways to kind of understand the super soul or the the three aspects of lord vishnu guna avtaras vishnu avtaras shiva dakshay vishnu garbha dakshay vishnu and karuna dakshay vishnu so karuna dakshay vishnu is the atma of the all the universes all the creation material creation the garbha daksha vishnu is the from whose navel brahma ji comes and he creates one universe and like that millions of such universes are there from the pores of karuna daksha vishnu so he is like step 1 then garbha daksha vishnu step 2 and then step 3 is the is the shiro daksha vishnu who is the present as paramatma or the atma in everyone's heart in every atom andanta rasta paramanucha yantarastha he is situated in every atom in every jiva along with the atma there is paramatma the super soul and the super soul he says aham atma guna kesha and guna kesha word is used multiple times so basically means one who has overcome ignorance or darkness or sleep or tama and how can one overcome that by taking shelter of krishna one who takes shelter of krishna is free from darkness because krishna surya sama maya hoy andhkar yaha krishna taha nahi maya radhikar so ignorance has no place in the life of a krishna conscious person or darkness has no place in the life of a krishna conscious person because he is with krishna who is the source of all knowledge who is the source of all um light knowledge so that there can be when the sun is there there is no question of darkness so as i said we'll go a little faster here we want to add something okay yes let's move on to the next verse yes maybe want to be Next, twenty-one. Uh, yes, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Aditya Nam Aham Vishnu 
ज्योतिषाम अंशुमान मरीचिर्मरुतामस्मी नक्षता अहम शशि Translation Of the Adityas I am Vishnu of lights I am the radiant sun of the maruts I am marichi and among the stars I am the moon Very good Hare Krishna thank you So now Krishna will say multiple things until text number 39 of this I am that of this I am that of of the Adityas I am Vishnu of the light I am the sun basically just sharing some of those aspects which are great is is it not like just imagine we discussed last time also the sun and moon are like the eyes of the supreme lord they are so great just imagine the life without sun or the electric bill without sun right for one you know they, they did a like in india they have a daylight day night cricket match Is it not? So the night cricket match bill comes five lakh rupees just for one night. Can you imagine? That's close, like seven thousand dollars. It's a lot for one, for one, one night cricket match. So something like that. Because the point is, we discussed last time also about the oxygen, right? The air we are breathing. Something which we may take these things for granted, but the point is that Krishna is the hand behind Krishna. and we can try to connect the whole point the lord is sharing these vibhutis is so that we can try to understand that this is not by chance creation does not come by chance anything good does not come by chance right it's not by a big bang it's by a big brain <laughs> right so this is krishna's creations amongst amongst the adityas i am the vishnu amongst the light and the sun amongst the marutas and the the marichi amongst stars you know everyone likes moon especially the purnima chan everyone is feel so happy to see right so we can try to link it to krishna because a conditioned soul i was thinking like this even even in a temple sometimes we may be out of space is it not even maybe a temple even directly looking at the deities we may get spaced out right has it happened to anyone right you may get spaced out even in the temple or even amongst the devotees or even while reading bhagavad gita or bhagavatam we may get spaced out right or while chanting <laughs> i am sure it does not happen to you because all of you are very sincere devotees but uh, this happened to me uh, because i am very conditioned but we are trying to learn how to connect everything to to god and how to see the hand of the absolute truth behind all these aspects so in every each of the verse from there on krishna will always tell that he'll be the best among whatever category he is choosing to explain and uh, that does not mean that he is that particular person or element but he's just telling that he's the best among everything and uh, and krishna ended the ninth chapter by saying man mana bhav bhutto madhya jima minasku so he was always he, he meant he meant to say that always think of me so now in this chapter he's telling us how to always think of him even in the seventh chapter he did a little bit of rasam apsukante ya prabhashmi shashi surya so he he was talking about his presence in certain things and ninth chapter also he spoke a little bit about that in that chapter he be extensively speaking about the similar thing so uh in the material world we uh we try to learn things by the ascending knowledge we try to do experiment we try to utilize our brain we try to see what works what doesn't work how is it being created but krishna is actually discouraging that kind of knowledge in the beginning of this chapter because as we said that we cannot understand the creator because we are limited we are inferior to the creator you know if a computer gets stuck at some point the only the creator knows how to fix it the computer is doing a lot of innumerable things a lot of incredible things for us but when it gets stuck 
it's the creator, it's the person who knows how it works, uh, will will know how to fix it. So it's like Krishna, no, Krishna is a superior, he's a creator, he's a father, he's a maintainer. So he knows what works and what doesn't work. And so therefore the ascending knowledge is not the right method of attaining knowledge, it's the descending process that we take some, some information from the people who have already experienced it. And then if the need be, we can prove like, for example, uh, it is already mentioned in the scriptures that the cow dung is antibacterial, but a lot of people denied it and they said it for its test techniques and the different things like that. But now they've already proven that, yeah, it has antibacterial properties. So we can take the scriptures and then you know, prove it you know, just for the benefit of the whole world. That's what the devotees are doing. And that's what the Harvard does when the, on the brains of people who are chanting. You know, so they're, they're seeing what effect it has on the brain of, of the life of the person and they document it. So people get to know, yeah, whatever is written in the scripture is actually right. And that's what they've been recommending for years and years, the chant or about the cow dung or about the natural way of living. People want to go back, but it's also very hard. So, so we have to take the help of the creator, of the manual that he has given and then understand. Uh, Krishna is also teaching us how to just not appreciate the creation that he has created, but also see him within his creation. So all these verses will teach us that, that how to see Krishna, how to appreciate that Krishna has created such wonderful things, and at the same time see his presence in all these different uh, aspects of the world and always remember him. So for a pure devotee, they're never separated from the memory of uh, the Lord. They're always seeing the Lord like very naturally. But for us, we, we read the book, we understand, and then we, we, when we see the ocean, we will say, oh yeah, that, that Krishna said that of the water bodies and the ocean, you know. So like that, we may have to a little bit uh, tug our brain, tug our intellect, and then see, oh, that, that's what Krishna said in the Bhagavad Gita. But for a devotee, it's a very natural phenomenon. Just like when Prabhupada was walking by the seaside, uh, he pointed to his uh, disciples that who are those people? And they were surfing, people surfing on the sea. And uh, then the devotees said that they're, they're the surfers. And uh, Prabhupada said, no, they're sufferers because they're not able to see Krishna. And they're trying to enjoy Krishna's energy without appreciating Krishna. And then Prabhupada walked a little bit ahead on the beach side. And then he again said, uh, stopped, stopped and he said, uh, do you hear this? Do you hear the sound? And the disciples were a little confused and they paid little attention and they said, oh, the waves, the sound of the waves of the ocean. Yes, Prabhupada, we hear. Yeah, th those are the waves of the, the waves of the ocean, that the, the, the sound that they're making. Prabhupada said, no, it is the, it is the sound of the heartbeat of, of the topmost devotee of Krishna when, when the devotee is coming to meet Krishna. So they're always thinking of Krishna. Even in one lecture, His Holiness Shadhanath Swami Maharaj mentioned that when the water fall, when the water, the water falls, or there are fountains, and they make noise, the cascading of the water. It's actually the kirtan that they're singing for the Supreme Lord. So, so for a pure devotee, they can always hear, see Krishna everywhere, perceive very naturally. It's not artificial. It's not forced. It's just that. If, if a mother sees the shoes of, shoes of her baby, she, she knows it's my baby. You know, she immediately remembers it. It belongs to my baby. So it's like that for pure devotee. Uh, but for us, we sometimes have to exercise a little bit and then see, oh, this is, this is what Krishna said. Oh, this is a, oh of the, of the of fishes and the shark. You know? So when you see a shark, you can remember Krishna. Or you see any fish, you can remember, oh, Krishna said, of the fishes and the shark. You know, like that. And also, like, even for Prahlad Maharaj, he, he was able to see Krishna everywhere, even in the pillar. When his father asked, is, Krishna, is, is your Lord here? And he, he immediately said, yes, my Lord is here. Because he had, he had knowledge of the creator and of his creation. He could see the creator everywhere in his creation. But, and he, would, he was able to see God within matter. But Hiranyakashipu was seeing matter even in God. So when we are not, we have knowledge, we have spiritual knowledge, then we will, we will be able to perceive Krishna everywhere 
no matter what. And if we have no knowledge, we can see Krishna. We, we will not be able to see Krishna anywhere, even though Krishna is present everywhere. So that's the idea of this particular chapter. Thank you. I really like your point. Without knowledge, you will see even matter in spirit. With knowledge, you'll see even spirit in matter. I think I shared a joke one time that Yuri Gagarin went to space, right? That's what they say. <laughs> so there's a joke uh, again. He was not a believer of God. He came to a school and asked all the kids and the teacher, you kind of, oh, oh, he was a person who went to space and all that stuff. And they, they asked, okay, uh, some questions were asked that one of the questions was, hey, you went to space, did you see God? He said, no, there is no God. I have traveled all over the world. I even went to the space. I couldn't see God. There's no God there. Because generally people have this notion, where is God? Oh, he's up there, right? In, in common parlance, they say, oh, God is up there. So, you know, innocent kids were asking, hey, did you see God up there? Maybe you went to space. The teacher was a devotee of God. He had a good knowledge. Then when he left the class with his atheistic propaganda, the teacher explained, this person could not see God here. How will he see God there? <laughs> Right. The point is, let's understand the vision of a, of a self-realized soul or a Mahatma or a pure devotee. How do they see the world? How do they perceive the world? As Manjali shared the example of Prahlad, it's a beautiful verse from Chaitanya Charitamu. Maybe Vinita, she can read. Hare Krishna. Tavara chan kama dekhe na dekhe tara murti sarvatra haya nija ishta deva spurti Hare Krishna. The Maha Bhagavata, the advanced, the advanced devotee, certainly sees everything mobile and immobile but he does not exactly see their forms. Rather, everywhere he immediately sees manifest of the form of the Supreme Lord. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Lakshmi, you want to read the rest of the few lines? Yes, Lakshmi. Although he sees trees, mountains, and other living entities moving here and there, he sees all, all as the creation of the Supreme Lord and, the, and with reference to, this, to the context, He's only the creator and not what she's only the creator and the creation and not the creator. In other words, he he no longer distinguishes between the created and the creator. He sees only the supreme personality of Godhead in everything. He sees Krishna in everything and everything is Krishna. This is oneness. I Krishna first. Thank you. So sthavara means stationary. Krishna will say later amongst the sthavara, I'm the Himalaya. You know, Himalaya is one of the biggest stationary things. Can anyone move Himalayas? Or try? Okay, maybe I um, can't. Like, I don't think anyone else can. <laughs> if Krishna chooses to, he can. But none of us. Na dekhi tara murti. So, so basically, they don't see sthavara. Stationary or jangam. Jangam means legs. Or those who have legs means like humans, animals, birds, etc. He's seeing a self-realized soul is seeing Sarvatra Ho Ishtadeva. Who is Ishtadeva? Krishna, the supreme Ishtadevata of all the devatas. He is seeing that supreme Lord in every aspect of his creation. This is the vision of a self-realized soul. And this is what we are trying to develop to transcendentalize our vision, to spiritualize our vision, right? Because different things people will perceive differently. Is it not? Now, when you see the rose, what comes to your mind? Honestly, let's take a few responses. 
Just let's say you you went to a garden and you saw a beautiful rose. General first response, what comes to your mind? Yes, Sushil Pramadaj. Color and smell. Color, smell, nice. It's a nice, nice smelling rose. Very nice, beautiful color. Yeah. What else, Ravni? Beauty, Prabhuji. Beauty. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. Nice. Yeah. More. Any more responses? What's Avni's response? Maybe you raise your hand. What is yours? It was the same. Yeah, beauty. Beauty. Yeah. Right. So basically, we generally see the the created. Is the created object of the creator? Is it not? We just read that. We we generally because we are not at that level. At least I am not. We generally see the the creation or the created objects or of the creator, right? But the advanced, let's let's perceive. You know, the same rose people will perceive it differently. Now, what will a very materialistic person, a sense gratifier, try to do with it? Okay. Now, what will they do with it? Any thoughts? Can I do something, Prabhuji? Hmm? Yeah, yeah, please tell. When I see this rose, you see it's the creation of Lord Krishna. How beautiful he created this rose. It has a life. So... You nurture this life. You enjoy this life of Krishna. Wonderful. Very nice. So a materialistic person will think, oh, let me give it to my dear someone, right? They smell it too. Or they will smell themselves. Oh, wow, so beautiful. Oh, or they will try to put in their hairs or their ears or their their wives, their husbands, <laughs> whatever, right? They will try to basically either selfishly enjoy or to the extent it's, let me take it for my daughter, let me take it for my mother, or let me take myself, or, or some people even eat rose petals, let me eat it, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, so basically, they will try to enjoy, is it not? Uh, impersonalist, <laughs> what will they say? False. Everything is, you know, just ignore. No, this is this is uh, mithya. This is this is illusion. Forget about it. You know. But what will be the vision of a devotee? Anyone? What will be the actions of a devotee when they see? Yes, Karina. We will be thinking of the creator for it, not the creation. Okay, very nice. And what they will do with it? Probably the uh, one de uh, devotee can uh, think that when they will uh, offer it to the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. Yes, wonderful. Because everything belongs to him. Bhuktaram yagita pasam sarva loka mahishwara. It is a beautiful creation of my beautiful Lord Krishna. Let me take this for my, for my master, for my supreme Lord, for my dear most friend, Lord Krishna. And Krishna says, Patram Pushpam Phalam Toyam. He will remember the words of Bhagavad Gita. In his mind, the images of the Lord's beauty, okay, let me make a garland out of this rose. Let me offer it on the, some petals on the Lord's body. Or let me make something out of it. Let me see milk. Oh, let, I'll take milk. I'll make maybe our sweet rice for the Lord. When we see the vegetables in the market, oh, I'll, I'll let me buy this vegetable because Radharani likes this vegetable. Because Krishna likes, Lord Goranga likes bananas. So they are, they are not seeing the fruits and vegetables. They're seeing what their, their Lord likes. And their vision is different. That it is the creation of the Supreme Lord. Right? He's a supreme cause, supreme creator, but the vision is different. So that is the formula to be Krishna conscious 24-7. Right? That's how we can be Krishna conscious 24-7 uh, and spiritualize our vision. 
So, and that's therefore knowledge is required. If we don't, if we see, if we remember these verses, at least the English, then we will see next time, oh, Krishna says that amongst the sun, amongst the, the illuminaries, the ones who give light, because there are multiple, like an electric lamp can give light, a tiny lamp can give light, a tube light can give light, but what's their proportion compared to the light of the sun? Hmm. Right? So the sun is, is really mighty. So the whole point is to spiritualize our vision by, by seeing each and every aspect of Krishna's wonderful creation. Let's read the next verse, text 22. Who would like to read? It's not read. Yes, Sir Jamal, please. Hare Krishna Prabhu, Dhanavad Pranam, Al Krishna Srila Prabhupada. Text 22. Bedanam sama beda ashmi, Devanam ashmi bashaba, Indriyanam manash jashmi, Bhutanam ashmi chetana. Translation of the Vedas, I am the sam beda, of the demigods, I am Indra and the king of heaven. Of the senses, I am the mind, and in living beings, I am the living force of consciousness. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Thank you so much. We'll read 23rd and 24th also. Who wants to read this? Vaswati Mataji, want to read? Shripa Mataji, want to read? I'll try, Prabhuji. Rudranam Sankaras Chasmi Viteso Yaksha Raksha. Raksasam Vasunam Pavakas Chasmi Mira Sikarinam Aham. Translation by His Divine Grace Prabhupada Prabhupada Kijay. Of all Rudras, I am Lord Shiva. Of the Yakshasas and Rakshasas, I am the Lord of Wealth, Kuvera. Sorry, Rak. I think it's Rak. Raksasas. Okay. Kuvera. Of the Vasus, I am fire, Agni. And of the mountain, I am Meru. Thank you. Thank you so much. Six twenty-four. Who's not read? Wants to read? Yes, Ami. Yes. Hi, Krishna. Puru. Puruta sam sham mukyam mam viti parta prihas patim senan nenam aham sangta sarasam asmi sagara. Translation Of priests, O Arjuna, know me to be the chief Brihaspati. Of generals, I am Kartikeya. And of bodies of water, I am the ocean. Are you both? Thank you. We'll take one more and then discuss some things. 25. Who has not read? Who wants to read? Anyone feeling inspired? Yes, maybe you can read. Hare Krishna, text 25. Maharshi Nam Vigur Aham. Giramasmi ekamaksharam yagna nam japa yagnosmi savara nam himalaya. Translation Of the great sages, I am Brugu. Of vibrations, I am the transcendental Om. Of sacrifices, I am the chanting of the holy names, Japa. And of immovable things, I am the Himalayas. Very bold. Thank you. So basically the idea in all these verses is that he is the best amongst the all the mighty forces of creation. It's like I'm the Kuvera amongst uh, the Yakshas. Amongst the bodies of water, there could be lake, there could be a tributary, there could be rivers, but what's their size compared to the mighty ocean? What's the size of Mount Meru compared to all the other tiny mountains 
you know, scientists don't even know about the Mount Meru or Sumeru Mountain, the Golden Mountain. Amongst the Vedas, the Sam Vedas, amongst the, the, the demigods, I am the Indra, the king of heaven. Indra is Devendra. And of the senses, I am the mind. Because mind is the, you know, above the senses, right? We have discussed that. Manashashtani Indriyani. My mind is this compared to the sixth sense, which, which basically is the controller in one way of the senses. The mind wants to, let's say, eat something. Then the hand will go to that object and put it in the mouth because the mind is telling, hey, you have to do this. Is it not? The mind is like the king of the senses. So, so basically the whole point is that uh, when we see these objects, when we, when we, um, you know, then we can try to connect to the Supreme Lord. But the very important point Krishna says is, Yajnanam Japa Yajnasmi. I am the, the Japa Yajna or the holy name. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. Krishna Varnam to Shakrishnam Sango Pangastra Parshadam Yajyai Sankirtana Prari Yajanti Hi Sumedasaha. In the age of Kali Yuga, which is going on, Lord Chaitanya came as, uh, Lord Krishna came as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to give the Sankirtana Yajya or Japa Yajya. Now, generally, when we talk about Yajya, the first impression comes as fire, right? Some fire, some priest putting some oblations in the fire, some smoke coming, some mantras chanting, etc. So the devotees, Acharyas, give this an, an analogy of Sankirtan Yajna. What are we putting in? There is a Havan Kunda or Yajna Kunda. So that Kunda is basically our ears. And we put some, and typically we put the, the, the mantras. Right? So the sound are the oblations. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Hare Hare. Using the fire, the hearing power. We have been given this hearing power. We must engage our ears. And how do we put through the ladle or this called shruva? So the ladle or the spoon of our tongue, the tongue vibrates. And when the tongue vibrates the holy name, it said Krishna dances on the tongue. Right? Because the tongue is the medium through which without tongue we cannot speak, right? You can even try, just hold your tongue, like try to speak without moving your tongue. <laughs> it's not possible, right? So the so tongue is the spoon or the ladle with which we are pouring the sweet holy name in the, the, the Havan Kunda or the Yajna Kunda or the ears. But all this is for, for a purpose or for a beneficiary. Vasudeva Para uh, Makha. He is the he is a supreme beneficiary. The sub beneficiary is Lord Gauranga, Sri Sri Radha Krishna, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Radha Krishna Nai Anya. The whole goal of the sacrifice is to please Sri Radha Krishna, to please Lord Chaitanya, to engage in their loving devotional service. So in Kali Yoga, and many people say, hey, where is Bhagavad Gita talk about this chanting and yajna and, and holy name? You guys do this. Bhagavad Gita does not talk about well, Krishna says here, amongst all types of yajnas, right? You have to understand here that amongst, like Krishna says, among the illuminaries and the sun. That means there are multiple objects of illuminaries, like, um, you know, tube light and this bulb and that bulb. But what's the best is the sun. Similarly, there are multiple types of yajyas. This yajya, that yajya. But the, what's the best yajya? Yajya nam japa yajyas. Especially in this day and age. For it is simple. Anyone and everyone can do it. It does not take a lot of big, big, you know, arrangements and mantras and tantras and, and paraphernalia and whatnot. It does not need any day, time, place, anywhere, anyone, everyone, rich or poor, white or black, male or female, old or young, married or unmarried, literate or illiterate, no bar. Japa Yajna, anyone and everyone can just simply do it. Raise our hands and call out, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. 
Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. This is the simple and the most sublime and the recommended process of, for this day and age. So Krishna is emphasizing, and Sri Prabhupada is also emphasizing in the purport about the Japa Yagya here. Do add. So I was just talking to a devotee a couple of days back and she was just mentioning that she sat for a particular fire sacrifice. So sacrifice really means actually gratitude. Oh, so we express our gratitude to the Supreme Lord, like in third chapter, we talked about so much about sacrifice. And so it means gratitude, we're showing our gratitude. So they were sitting for a fire sacrifice and she said it was three days and it was very elaborate, very tiring process. So one time uh, in Alachua, one of Shri Prabhupada's disciples was mentioning that Krishna say Yagyaram Japo Yagyosmi. Japa is a little bit of a hard work. It requires our attention and sincerity. So we have to, that is our sacrifice. So that is our, you know, our token of gratitude to Krishna that we chant uh, sincerely and attentively uh, the holy names of the Lord, even though sometimes it's difficult. So we try to express our gratitude and love through, through this process of uh, chanting of the holy names. And she said, Japa is a little bit of hard work. You know, just uh, sitting through the fire sacrifice is a hard work. It's, it's tiring, it's exhausting, it's elaborate. It, it requires so much of attention and sincerity, cleanliness, purity. Similarly, for chanting, we don't have to consider the external situation so much, but it's just that little bit of faith and sincerity and, and attention that we have to offer into this uh, into this sacrifice of sharing the Holy Names. Thank you. Anyone has any comments, thoughts before we move on to the next verse? Any reflections so far? Prabhuji, a small question, uh, ju just trying to understand. Um, we, we read that, uh, we, we have read that Krishna is in everybody and everything, right? Every living or non-living. Um, but here in these phrases, Krishna is saying that um, I'm, I'm an Indra, I'm, I'm Indra, I am uh, Shiva, like the, the best of the best, right? Um, is there anything that we should understand from it? How, how, how should we take it? Yes, it's a nice question. I think Manjali uh, mentioned that. So it's the point is basically when we see these special aspects of God's creation, he's everywhere. Like that, there are three ways of understanding where is God, right? One is that he's everywhere, right? He's present in this pen. He's present in this mouse. He's present in this earphones. He's present everywhere. But that's a very low level of understanding. As Paramatma, Andantara, in every atom, he's present. Paramanu, Paramanu, Anu. Anu means atom and like, like subatomic particles, he's present in as everywhere. The next aspect is he is present uh, as the effulgence, like para, Paramatma, um, the effulgence, Paramatma, and the Bhagavan. But the topmost aspect is that he's always present in the spiritual world. Goloka Vrindavan, doing his Nitya Leelas. So he is present everywhere through his different energies, like expansions, incarnations, like Mahavishnu, Varabhadakshai Vishnu, Shirodakshai Vishnu, etc. Like the Prime Minister. Where is the Prime Minister? He's present maybe at his home, maybe with his family. But through his different energies, uh, if I, let's say, let's say, go and, uh, you know, puncture the <laughs> prime minister's car, just a very silly example, right? It's, a, it's an offense to the prime minister, is it not? No, I didn't poke the prime minister, is it not? But I punctured his car, it's an offense to the prime minister. So he's present in his car, which is his energy. So... The point is, yes, Krishna is present everywhere through his energies, yet he's, he is in everything. Everything rests upon him as the pearls rest upon uh, the string. In multiple verses, Krishna says, yes, I am in everything, but, but I am not in them also. 
in chapter 9 he says that so it, it's a deeper understanding of lords that when if, let's say if i am present in punta goda then i'm not in tampa because i am a jiva an ordinary jiva but when the when we talk about the supreme lord when he, let's say he comes uh, you know as lord ram as as lord chitanya mahaprabhu or he comes to the bhomya or this world bhomya vrindavan it's not that his spiritual world is vacant let's say if i go to india but i'm not present here in us but if i go to another state or city i'm not present in this city but the same is not true for the supreme lord krishna that, uh, got got it prabhu maybe uh, it takes time for me to understand more but yeah thank you so much thank you for your sincere question Let's take one or two more verses, and then I'll show you a video. Who will want to see a, a video? Okay, who wants to see? And is this person? Let me stop so you can see the video. But let's see a few more verses. Ah, uh, twenty-six and twenty-seven. We we'll read. Yes, Vinita, please read. Hare Krishna. As Aswata Sarva Vikshanam Devarsinam Chanarada Gandharvanam Chittarathaha Siddhanam Kapilo Muni. Of all the trees, I am the banyan tree, and of the sages among the demigods, I am Narada. Of the Gandhar of the Gandharvas, I am Chitra Ratha, and among perfected beings, I am the sage Kapila. Hare Krishna. Wonderful. Thank you. Twenty-seven. Anyone? Mr. Lee, in a position to read. Mr. Jamal is going to try. Yes, Prabhu. Jaisrabam Ashanam Bidhimam Ambrita Bhavam Oiravatam Gajendranam Naranam Naradhipam Translation Of horses know me to be a Uchaisrava producing during the churning of the ocean for nectar. Of Lord the elephants, I am Oiravata, and among men, I am monarch. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Oh, thank you. One, two, two. <clears throat> Ayudha nama hamvajram, dhenu nama smikamadhup, prajunash cha smikandharpa, sarpa nama smivasati. Of weapons, I am the thunderbolt, among cows, I am the surati. Of causes for procreation, I am Kandarpa, the god of love, and of serpents, I am Vasuki. Thank you. Who all learned fifteen point one? It's connected to the text. Uh, the trees, the banyan tree. You learn. Ashwatha prahura vyayam. So Ashwatha is the banyan tree. Ashwatha sarva vikshana. Do the vrikshas and you know. amongst the trees, I am the banyan tree, right? Because in India, or we have seen that banyan tree is is very uh is uh very is the highest. Rupal is writing is the highest and the most beautiful trees, and it is very worshipped, right? So basically, the point again is the best amongst these, and when we see, we can try to link it to God. That does not mean when we see other tree that oh God is not there always. So Krishna does not say among the trees I am the uh, orange tree. So we can't link that. The whole point is in India they say that if if the big aspect is covered, then the smaller things are naturally covered, right? So that means when we see any tree practically, we can connect it to the supreme law if we have the vision. Premanja churita bhakti viloca neena santa sadeva hrida yeshu viloca yanti. Those who have eyes with that love and devotion, as Manjali said, when the mother sees the, the shoes of the child, 
she's not seeing the, the, the just the shoes, right? Those shoes are very special compared to there may be so many other shoes in the market, right? Because it has a special connection with the child. Similarly, the vibhuti sees it as a connection. And this is vibhuti yoga, connecting with the, seeing the vibhutis or the creation of the Lord, to connect with the Lord. And uh, amongst the uh, demigods and sages, uh, the sages among the demigods are Narada and the Chitratha, they are beautiful singers. Uh, I am the Chitratha among the Gandharvas. And I'm the sage Kapila, who was born from Kardamuni and Devahuti and gave our wonderful teachings in the Bhagavatam, Canto 3, I believe. Uttrishrava was the horse, the great mighty horse born from the Samudra Mantana Dila, where multiple things came out, I think 12, 13 things came out. And uh, amongst the men, I'm the king, Adhipati, Adhipam, Naradhip is the king or the monarch mentioned here. Amongst the elephants, Gajendra, Ash, Eravata. Eravata is the white elephant with uh, how many tusks? Eravata has. Anyone knows? How many tusks? Eravata. Yes, maybe. Uh, did you... Um, can you repeat the question? I heard part of it and then I How didn't... many tests Eravat has? Eravat is the carrier of Indra, right? The great elephant. How many tests? A lot. <laughs> okay, <laughs> maybe this is your homework. You'll figure out. <laughs> A lot. So Eravat is the, the carrier of, of Indra. Uh, multiple you know, past times we've seen Bhagavatam, Ravat's mention is there. He also came from churning, yes. He also came from churning. I mean, that took it. So the point is that all the great things, monks, Ravat is a very mighty elephant. So, and amongst the weapons, Indra is Vajra, again, thunderbolt. Amongst the cows, the Kamadin, the Surabi cow. And amongst the Kandarpas, the Cupid, Kandarpa Koti Kamani Avishesh Shobham. Krishna is Madana Mohana. Madan is Cupid or Kandarpa. Krishna is Madana Mohana. So when we are attracted to Madana Mohana, we will not become mad because we are attracted to mad, Madan Mohan. <laughs> so we will not be mad by, by the mad lust, right? Because one is attracted to Krishna, then all the other things are very uh, feeble, very low pleasures. When one has the higher taste of Krishna consciousness, then these lower uh, lust, anger, etc., will not trouble that person. Because, so, as I said, I'll share a video. You want to add something? Watch a short video to see the different aspect of Krishna's creation or vibhutis. Let's see if it works. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna. So I'll directly go to the YouTube to try to find this thing.
Hare Krishna, how was it? Hari Hari Bol. Very nice, Roji. Very nice, Roji. Wonderful. Isn't it amazing. Right? Who would be a certain ignorant fool who would, after seeing all these millions of species of life and flora and fauna and mountains and oceans and valleys and caves and and say, hey, all this came by chance, all this flavor, the color, the beauty, the fragrance, and, you know, this is no chance. This is the Supreme Lord behind all this. Sthavara jangamana dekhi dekhi tara murti sarvatra hoya ishta deva spurti. He sees the connection to God. He sees the connection to Lord Krishna. So, you know, but... Even after seeing all this, some people say, no, oh, this came by chance, right? There's so much variety. And I just look at that. It, it is not a coincidence. There are some birds which are a few milligrams and they travel thousands of miles. Can any scientist make a helicopter like a few milligrams, which can travel miles and thousands of miles? So again, there is books written about, you know, the nature how we can learn so many things from nature. Each and every unique aspect of God's creation is so unique. So we can try to learn and, and, and uh, see the hand of God, the creator behind the created objects. This is bhakti. Um, and this will help us to, to not waste also, right? Like Prabhupada, Prabhupada passed time. <laughs> Prabhupada was in Mayapur. And uh, there was a hose which was dripping. So, but got really upset and said, hey, can't you see? Like this pointed to, can't you see? And the devotees were like thinking, what is her but pointing? Maybe he's seeing Radha Krishna dancing. Maybe Nitya Leela is going on. He's seeing that. And then he said, he was like, again, you know, with a heavy voice, hey, can't you see? They see the field, they said the fields were being watered and things like that. And then in Prabhupada said, third time, look at that hose, it's it's leaking water. Right. So Prabhupada was seeing the the hand, like this is Krishna's resources. We should never waste or cause minimal harm to the environment, to other living beings, right? Because this is we are all meant to. Humans have the high intelligence. They are, they are supposed to be the caretakers for the environment, for the nature, for Krishna's resources, for Krishna's creation, and not supposed to use it like the materialistic person for their selfish or extended selfishness. So it's the whole chapter to see the hand of God in every aspect. And then we saw so many aspects. And there's still 39, so we won't be able to cover. Um, but let's read one or two more verses and then we'll open up for some uh, questions. So, who would like to read this? Maybe you can read. So, we read this verse, text 28, uh, 29, we can read. Yes, Prabhu, please. Can I read Prabhuji? Yes, yes, Prabhuji. Text 29. Anantaschasmi naga nam varuno yadasam aham pitra nam aryama chasmi yamaha samyamatam aham. Of the many hooded nagas, I am Anant, and among the aquatics, aquatics, I am the demigod Varun. Of departed ancestors, I am Aryama. And among the dispensers of law, I am Yama, the lord of death. Thank you, Prabhuji. Text 30, would like to read. Chital Mataji, want to try? Hare Krishna. Dandavat Pranam, all devotees. Pralladas Chashmi Daityanam Kalaha Kalayatam Aham 
मृगणा च मृगेन्द्रो अहम वैनेतेयश्च पक्षिना ट्रांसलेशन अमंग द दैत्य डीमन्स आय एम द डिवोटेड प्रल्हादा अमंग सबड्यूअर्स आय एम टाइम अमंग बीस्ट आय एम द लायन एंड अमंग बर्ड्स आय एम गरुडा हरि बोल हरि कृष्णा थैंक यू सो मच सो अगेन कृष्णा इज मेंशनिंग दैट अमंग द स्नेक्स आय एम द अनंत यू नो अनंत शेष कैरीज ऑल द यूनिवर्सेस the analogy given in the shrimad bhagavatam is is the universes now when we say universe we're talking about the 14 planetary systems and not just that we're talking about multiple of such universes are like mustard seeds how many mustard seeds you can put in your hand <laughs> thousand hundreds right so ananta is so big so huge so great same yamaraj the superintendent of death and uh, prahlad the best amongst the deathyas then uh, time krishna says amongst the subduers i am time so smrityu sarv harashaham kala vasmi krishna says kala kalayan kalayatam aham that uh, i am the time because time deteriorates like the age deteriorates an object deteriorates with time the home deteriorates anything deteriorates with time right so and uh, amongst the beast lion of course the king of jungle right we all learn that and uh, mriga naam cha mrigendro hum mriga mrigendra the lion is Mega is a deer. Megendra is a lion. Mega hmm. naam. Amongst all the animals, I am the Megendra, the the lion. So, again, the best of the best, Krishna is in every aspect. So we cover till thirty, and maybe next time we will cover this chapter. Let's do one more verse. So next time we'll be able to finish this chapter. Thirty-one also we we'll read. Who is not yet read? Wants to read? Man, bro, want to try? Mere bhi bro. Can I read Prabhu Ji? Hare Krishna. Yes, yes, please. Thank you, Prabhu Ji. Hal Krishna Shila Prabhu Pado. Pavana Pavatam Ashmi Rama Ha Shastra Britam Aham Jasha Nam Makaras Jashmi Srota Sham Ashmi Janabi. Of purifiers, I am the wind. Of the wilders, of weapons, I am Rama. of fishes i am the shark and of flowing rivers i am the ganges hari krishna some more vibhutis um of like i remember one time we went to gangotri the force is so much at the peak and the, the origin of mata ganga so huge force that anything which you know is there will be just flown away with the swift current of the of the the river and of course mata ganga is so purifying just by chanting the word ganga one gets purified what to speak of actually bathing in in, in the river so like that krishna is sharing multiple multiple attributes among the fishes of course shark purifies the wind the wielders of weapon of course lord ram you know kill 14000 any demons in, in like less than 1 hour can we imagine 14000 demons shooting 14000 arrows in less than like 1 hour so how many arrows per minute how many arrows per second <laughs> you do that math <laughs> so any comments questions additions here before we wind up for today
Yes. Nandati Mataji, you want to say something? No, it was very wonderful. I have one question. Uh, I debate myself sometime. Like uh, when you see a flower in your own garden, say that rose, like you give the example. I hesitate to pick it up because it is a uh, creation of Lord Krishna. Also, it is a food for some animals, like uh, bees and wasps. So when I go there to pick it up, I kind of say, because of my selfishness, I'm picking this flower to offer this thing to Lord Krishna's feet. But at the same time, I'm taking this flower away from some these uh, creatures that Lord Krishna's uh, uh, children, I'm taking their food away. So I kind of like back up. I said, not today, maybe tomorrow when they take that call, the next away. Is that okay? That's uh, certainly your quality of kindness and compassion. Um, to be caring towards everyone. It's a very nice quality. But uh, let's let's understand it deeper. You said out of your selfishness, you are offering it to Lord Krishna. That is actually not selfishness. That is real selflessness. Nate vidu swartha gatin Vishnu, Lord Maharaj says. The real self-interest is to serve the Lord. So that's not selfishness. Yasmin tushte jagat tushte. Right? If we are able to please Lord Krishna, then we are, we'll be able to please everyone. But if you are not able to please Lord Krishna, then so-called selfless acts will also become into extended selfishness. So, yes, we must offer. Of course, when the, the flower is good to be offered, when the fruit is good to be offered in its best condition, right? when it's fully ripe and blossomed, then we offer the Lord, either making a garland or making this directly the petals, etc. And yes, you have a very loving and caring attitude towards, let's say, the birds and the bees. You can always offer some grains to the Lord and put it on your, what do we call, bird stand? Bird, bird, uh, there's some. Rice flower. Yeah, you can put those as an offering. Now, now you're not feeding their body only. Feeding the body, Prabhupada says, what is real compassion? Compassion for the dress of a person who is drowning is actually not compassion. Let's say a person is drowning and you save their dress. Oh, you're wearing a very nice tuxedo, or which is $5,000, and you somehow manage to save the dress. The person is drowned. Is it, is it very selfless? Is it a noble act? Not really, right? But the real act of compassion is to save the person. In this case, to save, the, to deliver the soul of those animals. So you help them. You can put Prabhupada's Mahamantra, Japa. They will hear the holy name through their senses, right? They will get purified. And you take some grains or some flowers, you offer the Lord, and then put it in your backyard or, or whichever place you feel the birds will be able to access those grains and flowers then they will get the remnants of the Supreme Lord. Then that is real selflessness. So that is real compassion. Because then the next life, knowingly, unknowingly, um, because they received the mercy of the Lord in the form of prasad or, or the remnants of the Lord or in the holy name, directly or indirectly, they will get a higher elevated spiritual birth in their next life and uh, complete their cycle of birth and death and go back home, back to God. Does that help? Yeah. So you're doing yes. a great service. Thank you. Oftentimes we feel that we are sustaining. If we, if, the, if we don't give them food, it's not, is it not that Krishna will provide them? It's Krishna's creation. He has so many arrangements made. We think, if you're not there, will they not get food? 
He will, you know, they'll somehow get it because uh, Krishna is the maintainer of every living entity. So we try to make the world small according to our perspective. You know, Krishna's arrangements are perfect. They're not limited like us or our thinking. So we should allow uh, the natural course. But the plant that you offer to Krishna is also getting a spiritual birth. It's getting the benefit of being offered uh, at the feet of uh, the Krishna because that whole plant is liberated. They get a human, human life in the, next, in the next time. And uh, honey is like very important ingredient for Vedic you know, worship of the Lord in the Vedic culture. It's very important, very pure ingredient. So Krishna has different arrangements to make it happen. And it will happen as long as we uh, cooperate with Krishna's plan. And we don't have to uh, think too much because Krishna knows how to sustain everything. Thank you. Thank you so much for your thoughtful and kind question and your compassionate nature. Thank you so much. Any other thoughts, comments, anyone has? Any additions, reflections, or questions? Yes, Sujaya Mataji, I think you wanted to ask or tell something. Prabhuji, I want to, uh, I need to some clarification. Prabhuji, text um, 10.21, here it says, uh, the, in Morutas, uh, I am the Marichi. So, Prabhuji here, there are uh, 50 varieties of wind. And text 31, there it says, uh, Krishna says, um, of purifiers, I am the wind. So, could you please, Prabhuji, explain more because the Marutas and the wind? I'm a little bit confused. There are 50 varieties of winds blowing in the space, in the space. Marichi is the controlling deity. Hmm. And again, all these are, you know, like, like Prabhupada has not, again, all these, elaborating on all these would be a, you know, different topic in, in themselves, like talking about the Yakshas, it could be a very big topic, talking about the Rudras could be again a big topic. Talking about Meru again could be a big topic in itself, talking about the Marichis. Uh, but um, Prabhupada has not elaborated a lot on these uh, topics. Um, so I can uh, ask more uh, at this point. Uh, maybe we'll keep it till here because there, there are a lot of, again, topics here. Again, wind is a purifier, right? Like, for example, wind is a natural purifier. There are many purifiers, like water is a purifier, wind is a purifier. So among the this is the object. So among these objects of purification, Krishna is saying, I am the wind, which is probably the supreme. Like even in the Vedic culture, people wouldn't use the towel to to you know dry them. They would just allow the air to be dried because that's the considered the cleanest standard of you know go of, and you know bathing and then clean air, air drying by the wind and then wearing your clothes and clean clothes, not in the contaminated place, and then going and worshiping the demons. So the objects among the purifier, Krishna is saying, I'm the wind, but here he's talking about the personality. So among the controlling deities, he's a Marichi. The different kinds of probably winds blowing, and they are all have a personality controlling them. So of those personalities, he's the Marichi, the best of, amongst the, all the personalities. Thank you, Prabhuji and Mataji. Okay, any last comment before we pause for today? So thank you so much again for your kind attention and giving this chance to read here Bhagavad Gita together. So grateful to all of you. Bhagavad Gita Upanishad ki chai, Shri Prabhupada ki chai, Samadhi ki chai. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Parvoji. Thank you. 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 Thank you.